So in this video what I want to do is show you how to convert this world space volumetric cloud into an object space one and then look at one of the problems that you might have when one of these clouds intersects another object while you're excluding it from more sophisticated lighting. So to begin with I'll point out that if you watch this video you will learn a few things about the strangeness of volumetric materials and how they interact with lights and in this one you can find out how to make this one component volume cloud. So as I said to begin with we'll start by modifying this cloud into an object space based one. As things stand it's world space based so if I create say a terrain uh, so I'll create a little terrain here in default grey and I'm going to move it so that it's uh, in the cloud so here we go I'll just enlarge this a bit so this is in the default grey material all being well stick it up in the cloud there we go now you can see this mountain is in the clouds now if I wanted to move this cloud across because it's world space mapped this means that the pattern is determined by the origin of the world not the position of the slab indeed we've used this property of it being world space mapped and taken advantage of it so we can change the dimensions of the slab to remove the banding that appears sometimes in this cloud and have a more efficient render but it makes it a bit difficult to reposition clouds for example supposing in this case I want to move this cloud across to the right so we can see the top of the mountain in this gap if I just take this slab and move it in the X direction it doesn't actually move the clouds because its point of reference is the Bryce world if I want to move those I go into the material here into transformation tools and try and find an offset on the X direction let's try and minus one Bryce units see if that shuffles it across okay so yes but you sometimes it's difficult to work out exactly what the offset should be I'll just control Z back to the position I was in before the other thing about this is that what you have with this infinite plane which is a slice is you sometimes see a change in the cloud if you move it in the Y direction because what you'll do is lose some of the top and gain some at the bottom so that's slicing through the pattern the pattern exists if you imagine filling all of the 3d space and this is just our window on it the shape but if we modify this to object space mapped now and give it a render the pattern will follow the object because that will be its point of reference and you can see that this looks a bit odd and that is because we stretch this object out so it's also conforming to the scale of the object so if I return this to unity by holding control and alt down to get together and are going on one of the control points and clicking it side view you can see its unity value is uh, not quite a square object which would be helpful because everything is proportioned according to it being square even in all directions so if I make this a cube now look in the material you can see X Y and Z proportions are the same and likewise it, when we made this material in, in the noise values here the frequency is the same in the X Y and Z so everything's set up for everything being even in those directions which is why I've made this cube now if I go back to this now and I want to position this cloud to the left because it's object space mapped I can just drag the cloud over and out it comes now let's move on to the next thing if you want to change the scale of this cloud now you can't do so by changing the well you can you can change the scale of the cube to make it finer but this means it also gets thinner if you stretch it vertically then it's going to be out of proportion and this is going to look like the sides are stretched vertically so to overcome this and get it different proportions you'd have to go into the material use the transformation tools and hold the shift key down and if in the middle here you can alter it by um, tenths of a percent so there you go and and then you can change its scale so you can scale it that way so it's scale is dependent on the size of this cube and those scale values but you can't just stretch the cube to make it taller because it'll stretch the pattern in this case whereas before when it was world space mapped you had that freedom because it was just extending the slice now if we move to a state where we've got a little bit more sophisticated lighting I'll show you the next issue that I can sort of go some way to overcoming right I'm going to use sky sky dome only to create HDRI lighting okay I'll lower that down so I've got 16 virtual lights change the values of these a bit so 
it looks appropriate. I'm going to turn the sun back on, but lower its output value. Let's try 150, see how that looks. Now you might immediately notice that the render time has gone up, and the reason for that is that we're getting all these extra light rays falling on the clouds. So if I use image based lighting and the exclude option, and I'll exclude this slab, the cloud slab, then only the sunlight falls on the clouds, but everything else gets the extra lighting. That's fine. Now, supposing I want to position this cloud so, well, first of all, it's in front of this mountain, so I'll move it forward and to the right, and that's okay. Uh, this, this can obscure. I can lower it down as well, and the cloud will come down because it's an element on the object. Ah, here we go. This is the problem you have. It was obscuring it before, but as soon as the thicker volume of the cloud touches the the mountain, then you get a reaction between the two. And I'm going to move this across so that reaction becomes a lot clearer. I'm going to move that back so the mountain is getting really into the cloud there. So there is a band here where it's lighting up. And what's happened, this is a bit odd, that that is diffuse light associated with the surface of the terrain, or whatever is intersecting the cloud, but it, it's, not, it's not excluded because it's as if the cloud has stuck to that and it's no longer part of the exclusion rules. I can show this by, uh, well, first of all, I could exclude the terrain as well. So the terrain's going to look a little bit dark compared with everything else now because it's not receiving the extra light, but it's no longer creating this problem. So it's to do with the excluded light arriving on the terrain, but if I, if I say take the diffuse right out of the cloud, for example, and then I re-include the terrain, so it's now no longer excluded, it's not having this problem. So it's the diffuse landing on the, from the cloud on the terrain but it's linked with the terrain. So there's a weird crossover occurring between these two, and I'm going to take advantage of that. And it's also interrelated, oops, I need the cloud here. It's also interrelated with this volume property, which is to do with the diffuse as well, because if I set this to fully black, then I can have the, diff oops, have the diffuse right up at 100. And again, there's no light up even though it could be affecting that it doesn't shine through that but I don't know if that's, it's just absorbed by that being fully black but I did notice that nothing else seems to help us here I've tried negative lights and uh, hypertexture negative hypertexture to try and eliminate this effect but what it did occur to me was so this is the cloud getting painted onto the terrain and that's then lighting up what if I take this terrain control C control V edit it, lift it up very slightly, modify the material now so that it's fully transparent and use blend transparency. Okay, so transparencies tend to take a while to render, but we're going to exclude the cloud. And I'll just change the name of this to uh, invisible and then we'll give this a quick render. This lighted area, and I can show this by hiding the original terrain just uh, temporarily is associated with the invisible terrain so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use sky and fog here image based lighting and then exclude the invisible terrain so now it's excluded so it doesn't have this lighting problem so the diffuse has been transferred from the thicker volumetric cloud onto the surface of the visible terrain but that's excluded so that renders fine and this terrain is underneath it it's no longer intersecting with the volume cloud it's essentially had a hole made for it say if I make this visible again I can demonstrate that this is a way that you can have image based light lighting falling on the terrain that's going through the cloud and you're excluding the cloud so its render time is reasonable we are rendering an invisible terrain that's shrouding this other terrain but because I've moved it up slightly it's not intersecting it's just creating a space to uh, to let this travel through and because the invisible terrain is excluded from the image based lighting that makes it more efficient to render and it's capturing the bug if you like that we were having before and hopefully saving us 
from this lighting up effect. So that was the only way so far that I've been able to think of to get around this issue. So I hope you found that uh, interesting and uh, useful and that you'll use these techniques in your own renders. Cheers now.